Today we're talking about cementation technique in total knee replacement, what is the state of the art and what to look out for. Uh, at the moment, the, um, uh, the, one of the two main reasons for revision is loosening and some of those loosening cases are due to inadequate cementation and potentially preventable. Uh, if you look at uh, the registry data, most people will still cement uh, knee replacements today and this is still the gold standard. Uh, certainly if you look at the English register, there's some differences worldwide, but it, it, at least 85 to 95 percent. Um, cementation has evolved a lot and uh, there's a great technique in hips, especially for the stems. But uh, there is no great consensus of how to do the cementing in knee replacements. Uh, this is a study uh, talking about uh, is there any consensus about uh, what are the key steps of cementation. And there are certain uh, aspects which they've been able to come to a consensus and others which is not as strong. So let's, we're going to go through uh, all of these step by step. But we can agree that we use a sing single stage cementing, we cement the tibia first. And it's very important how to apply the uh, cement. So we'll go step by step to all of these and uh, talk about some of the details. So what are the most important topics? Tourniquet. Um, quite a lot of people have started not to use tourniquet uh, due to its potential detrimental effect in, uh, uh, in the quadriceps and the muscles and bleeding. But it's still the state of the art and you definitely should use tourniquet for uh, cementation. Uh, it will help you uh, achieve a good penetration and no debris in the surgical field. There's numerous studies talking about this. There is, we can uh, with a moderate certainty say that uh, cementation will be better with tourniquet and although we're not exactly sure uh, what are the detrimental effects of uh, tourniquet use, this will require further study but for the moment we can agree that tourniquet is preferable um, how to apply the cement? Cement works in good cancellous bone. If you don't have good cancellous bone, you will not have a good interface. Therefore, uh, the sclerotic regions need to be drilled to about 2-3 millimeters to create some keyholes and these are important for cement penetration. The ideal depth would be 2-3 millimeters. Um, prior to cementation, cleaning and drying of the bone is paramount. Uh, if you have the chance to use a pass lavage machine, it's better than using a manual flushing alone and can improve your fixation strength. You have to dry it, you can use some uh, swabs for this and also it's an important part uh, prior to cementation. Uh, the cement mixing uh, uh, has gone through generations. The most important aspects here for us is to use a closed system, ideally under vacuum, and uh, which will avoid, which will create a much more uniform cement mantle with no air bubbles. And this is why a recommendation would be to use a mixing tool, either a gun or a bowl. Uh, this will reduce your contamination. Change your gloves prior to cementing and also ideally afterwards. This will prevent ha having fat or blood on your gloves and also in your cement. Uh, timing of cement implantation is, is crucial. You have to know your own cement that you're using, which is an antibiotic cement always, if possible. And you have to you know the phases of uh, bone cementation to uh, put it in the ideal phase. If you do it too late, uh, again, penetration will suffer and uh, you, you will not have an ideal cement mantle. You can see a graph here about the four phases, mixing, weighting, modeling and hardening and what you can uh, see as you increase the temperature the mixing phase becomes much shorter so you have much less time to play with therefore you should avoid having cement in a heated room uh, because then your mixing time will be less the rest of the phases are roughly the same how to apply uh, the cement it is extremely important to apply it both to the implant and the bone and this applies for both the tibia and the femur. 
So you would put cement on the tibial surface that you created and cleaned, also on the tibia, and, and uh, manually pressurize the cement. And this will allow you to have the best penetration uh, of cement into the tibial metaphyseal area. Same applies to the femur. Some crucial parts are the anterior and the posterior flange. This is where you sometimes see lytic areas on your postoperative x-rays later. So again, you have to put uh, bone cement on both implants and on the, uh, the bone. Uh, anterior flange is an important one and also the posterior condyles. Uh, really, uh, this has to be um, done meticulously and uh, also again you want to avoid any excess cement get coming off the back of the bone so whilst you're preparing you have to be mindful that there might be some cement in the back of the knee. Uh, once you cemented and pressurized and you're uh, putting in your trial insert ideally you, you, you want to have the knee in a slightly flexed or a fully uh, extended position and keep it that way. There should be no further manipulation uh, uh, after uh, cementation. So you have to keep the movement as little as possible. Movement creates voids and uh, facilitates blood to seep into voids and therefore the, your cement mantle will suffer. So you use a couple of a few degrees of flexion probably 20 degrees and no further movement at this point um, if you do have movement your cement mental strength will uh, uh, be less how do you remove the excess bone cement you want to have single clear movements and you want to create an interface um, you want to do not want to penetrate this interface between the cement bone and the implant you just want to have a clear single movement removal of excess cement. You don't want to remove any cement from underneath the implants and you only ideally want to do this once or as little as possible. Thank you very much. That was uh, the summary of a cementation technique.